Recap of round number 4 in the European Chess Club Cup against a very strong international master from Germany. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Chess Grandmaster and today I will dive into my round number 4 game in the European Chess Club Cup where I had the white pieces against a very strong international master from Germany with a rating of 2404. We had a tough opening preparation battle that led to an incredible fascinating endgame. If you are here for deep chess insight, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you'll, you will not miss any chance to see these intense recaps. Stick around until the end to see how the game and our match against the Germany team turn out. So I'm playing with the white pieces as always e4, c5, knight f3 and now e6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4 and now knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4 of course and the first move that comes to my mind is very bad, e5 is a bad move because queen a5 it's if I was just a blunder, queen a5 check and of course the next move will be take the pawn with the check here on e5 for example knight c3, queen e5 check, bishop e2 and knight c6 black is totally winning here with one pawn up and yeah it's, it's bad so after knight f6 of course the main move here is knight to c3 and this is what I played in the game and here there are several options for black so first of all is bishop b4, interesting move because now the knight e4 threat is coming but we will let it move e5 here and knight e5 just queen g4 attacking the pawn on g7 and if black will take the knight on c3 just queen takes g7 attacking the rook rook f8 and here a3 attacking the bishop so for example here if he's playing the move bishop a5 bishop h6 with just a terrible uh, you know like attack here queen takes f8 is checkmate on the board right so for example knight d5 knight b5 knight e4 it's not so uh, important just b4 and that's it white is uh, totally winning here because the bishop here on a5 and the rook on f8 yeah the game is over uh, white is winning absolutely so yeah bishop b4 is not the the best move of course after e5 knight e4 there is queen g4 the same thing right as we already saw uh, so bishop b4 is not the best idea for black here but there is another option to play the move d6 for example but here g4 the keres attack uh, with g5, h4, so black should play the move h6, but here if I uh, remember correctly the move is h3 with the plan of bishop g2, bishop e3, queen e2 and long castle with f4, e5 and it's a very good uh, attack here and the initiative of course with white. So the Keras is also uh, really strong for white, so here uh, yeah, he played the move knight c6 and I called this variation uh, the four knights in the Sicilian and here there are several options of course for white the main line nowadays is knight x c6 and after b x c6 e5 knight f knight e4 so knight e5 sorry knight e4 and here queen c7 f4 queen b6 uh, and now the main line is to play c4 bishop b4 check king e2 very nice move and after bishop a6 king f3 and this is very nice uh, to look about this position if i remember correct f5 knight f2 interesting position uh, to play now something about knight e7 bishop e3 uh, yeah this is nice takes takes queen d6 you can learn it uh, it's very nice for white um but i didn't want to go for all of this theory uh, but it's also of course possible another option here to play move knight db5 and here uh, also several options for black, bishop b4, bishop c5 and d6. So for example bishop c5, bishop f4, the main line is castle, bishop c7, queen e7, bishop d6, bishop takes, queen takes, and now queen d8, a6, um, oh sorry, uh, long castle, f yeah a6, knight e4 and now knight e7. And also so much theory, so much games were played here, uh, also interesting position to learn, you know, white will try to attack in the king side, while black will try to push b5, bishop b7, rook c8 and attack in the queen side. So yeah, also interesting uh, position to look. Um, after knight db5 there is another option, bishop b4, but now a3, bishop takes, knight takes, 
And after d5, there is some, you know, e takes d5, bishop d3, also some theory here with uh, games uh, that were played. I like this position for white, but after knight db5, uh, d6 is very good choice uh, by black. But here, after bishop f4, e5, bishop g5, a6, this is the Sveshnikov opening. And I don't like to play the Sveshnikov opening with bishop g5. So, yeah, overall, I didn't like uh, to play this knight db5 move. Another option here is to play the move a3. Uh, just without so much theory, just blocking the opportunity to play bishop b4 uh, and you really want to play the move bishop e2, bishop e3, castle and it's nice position to play uh, without theory. There was interesting game between Boris Gelfand uh, with the black pieces against uh, I think uh, Wang Hao, uh, d5, bishop b5, bishop d7, e takes d5, e takes d5 and just castle. Interesting position also to play with both sides. So yeah, I didn't play the move a3 uh, overall, I played the move here bishop e2. And this is a really nice uh, move to, to play. Of course bishop b4 comes to my mind and what to play, but I was, um, you know, I, I got some uh, interesting idea um, from a friend about this position and now I play the move just castle. And here bishop takes c3, b takes c3 and just knight takes c4. And we are just one pawn down, right? What can we play here? So there was interesting um, game bet between Abdul Saturov, one of the best players in the world nowadays, against uh, Thomas Birdzen, also Grandmaster from the uh, Netherlands in this position. Knight xc6 was played by Abdul Saturov and here uh, he took with the d pawn, of course, the best move, uh, what was also in the game. But if b takes c6, just queen d4 with double threat, the pawn on g7 and also uh, the knight on e4 and after knight f6 just bishop a3 and this is looking ve looking very strong for white right black and uh, can't castle rook a b1 rook f d1 c4 bishop d6 you know it's it's totally mess here right uh, the black here is very bad piece and it's close to to be winning for blue white here uh, without the pawn right but you know the initiative and the, and the activity of the position are just incredible so b takes e6 is not the move, d takes e6 is the best, and here I'm playing the move bishop to d3. And of course there are so much uh, opening preparation here, I will not uh, show you everything, because also, uh, you know, uh, th there are several very secret things here, uh, but but of overall knight takes e3 is not the best, because queen g4 and also queen h5, uh, with initiative for white. Uh, maybe one day I will do like, I don't know, uh, some... PGN that I will work on uh, and if you will like you can buy it uh, but of course there are so, so much uh, work about such uh, preparation and also analysis here so if you like maybe you can write to me in the comments uh, if you would like to receive for example some PGN about this preparation uh, so he played the move knight c5 the best move here and I will play the move queen g4 uh, queen f6 uh, for example after knight xd3 just Queen takes g7 uh, with winning position, right? The, the rook on f8, and yeah, of course, rook f8, for example, I don't know, bishop h6, c takes d3, white is winning absolutely here. So, yeah, knight takes d3 is not the best. Uh, castle, uh, not sure about it because bishop a3 after bishop b6 just takes, takes, and queen h5 probably, and white is clearly better here there. But queen f6 was the best move in the position, and now bishop g5 attacking the queen, and now queen takes c3 with queen g3. So the game between Abdul Saturov against uh, Thomas Birdzen uh, was very interesting after knight takes d3. And uh, okay, I, I, I checked there a lot and I analyzed a lot of uh, variations there. And I really like it for white, I can tell you. Uh, I will not uh, reveal it here. Um, but, but he played the move h6, the best move here. You can also check the game uh, Abdul Saturov against Thomas Birds is here. I played the move bishop f4 and now queen f6 and as you can see we already played 14 moves and our time is, is, is really there. We're playing it like in 5 minutes on the board. Bishop e5, queen g5, take on g7, rook g8 and now bishop takes h6, queen takes g3 and now f takes g3. And in this position it's really nice to see knight takes d3, c takes d3 and in this position 19 moves were played and this is the first time that one of our, uh, you know, one of us, me and my opponent started to think here. So he thought about 10 minutes and played the move c5 and he told me after the game that he remembered this line uh, in his preparation, uh, in his analysis here. So I was not sure about it, I didn't uh, saw this 
particular position uh, in my uh, analysis in home, but I plan to move a4 after 28 minutes and yesterday I told you that I r don't want to think so much time for one move, right? It's not a good thing to, to do, but overall it was like something that uh, I, I, you know, I give to me the opportunity to do it because you know, I have one hour and 30 minutes, right? I didn't waste any time until now or already 20 moves into the game. So 28 minutes for this move, it's fine overall, right? We have one hour in the 20 minutes, uh, 20 moves. So it's, it's totally fine and logical, right? So I'm planning to move A4. The point here that I'm just attacking the pawns, right? For example, if he's playing the move uh, Bishop D7, I thought to play the move Bishop E3 and attack this pawn on C5. So after b6, for example, just a5, and every single move that I'm playing, black has, uh, you know, problems to uh, to look for them, right? Now a takes b6 is the threat, and after rook b8, for example, I just play with rook fb1, for example, and now bishop c5 is the threat. So every single move is a threat. For example, king e7, I will take it, a takes, and I thought rook takes b6, rook takes bishop c5 check, rook d6, and now rook a6, and also this position is quite strong, right? I have two pawns uh, up, I take this rook and the pawn is running here, right? Sorry, yeah, so it's running and yeah, it's it's looking very, very strong. So after a4, he played a move b6 after 18 minutes of thought and now a5, another very strong, I think. And also, you know, I'm asking him a question. What do you play here? So, you know, this position, this style of position is very interesting because we have uh, the my I have bishop on on the black squares of course and he has the bishop on uh, the white squares and if I manage maybe to somehow to come with the bishop to f6 for example and h4 coming with you know the promotion will be here right so it it's re really in interesting endgame to play and you know I, I was shocked at how much um, you know variations and how much strategics ideas I found uh, during this game because it's it really was uh, interesting so after a4 yeah of course he played a move b6 a5 and now bishop b7 of course just um you know defend the rook on a8 but now I played a move bishop f4 after 18 minutes of thought and you know I, I liked uh, my uh, my idea here I, I thought in the beginning to just take the pawn on b6 a takes b6 and now rook takes a8 bishop takes and rook b1 but suddenly I thought about you know just he can play bishop d5 takes and king d5 and you know the next move will be rook a8 rook a2 rook a1 rook a3 maybe and i don't have here nothing i take bishop b3 just rook a8 with rook a2 and i don't have here anything yeah rook b2 for example c4 but maybe to play a little bit but should have been you know equal position right so it's very complicated, right? But I plan to move bishop f4 and I felt like this move is very strong because I'm bringing the bishop into the game. I also defend the pawn on g3 and now I can play the move h4, h5, h6, right? And another option is to play bishop e5 with very strong, uh, you know, diagonal here. So also the bishop on f4 can come to c7 to attack this pawn on b6. So I really like this idea. And for example, after king d7, I'm just playing the move bishop e5 and attacking this pawn on f7. So there are several, uh, you know, complexity in this position. So in castle, long castle, and I take the pawn, a takes b6, and now rook fb1. So now rook takes d3, rook takes b6. And of course, it was very, uh, you know, I, I was smi smiling to see that after rook d8, for example, rook a7, and here you can just uh, smile if you can see the checkmate in two. You can stop the video and think by yourself, but of course it's beautiful. Rook a8, check, bishop takes, and rook b8, checkmate on the board. And it's really nice tactic that I really like. Um, so in this position he thought, uh, I, I think, you know, like 10 minutes maybe? Yeah, 10 minutes. And play move e5, the best move in the position. Just bringing one pawn, but after bishop takes, rook e8. And black is start, you know, is starting to be very uh, active right and attacking this bishop on f4 and i'm planning to move rook a b1 and here another uh, very nice tactic after rook d7 white is just winning absolutely rook c6 check of course after bishop takes rook b8 checkmate on the board and if he's planning to move king d8 just bishop f6 
and of course this position winning absolutely the next move will be taking the rook with exchange up and winning position so yeah rook a b1 he took the bishop on e5 now rook takes b7 and in this position it feels to me that should be drawish position it should be equal but of course it's very difficult for him and i thought that he will play the move f5 here with the point that he really likes to play rook e2 rook d2 and to activate his pieces right his two uh, rooks of course in this uh, important row and i thought to play the move king f1 here and i was not sure because after rook d2 for example i thought to play rook 7 b2 and to exchange th these two rooks and maybe my h pawn will run some some time but should be a drawish position uh, of course with an accuracy uh, by him but after rook b7 he played the move rook d7 and i felt like this was a mistake and i played rook takes d7 king takes d7 and king f2 and my uh, idea was after king c6 to play rook e1 i really want to bring the king to d to c3 for example just block this pawn on c and just start you know like to activate my rook to e7 with h3 g4 somehow to bring uh, and the win right with the h and the g pawn so after rook takes e1 of course king takes and it should be winning absolutely because the king will be here oh sorry yeah uh, to come to c3 and that's it the pawns will run um, yeah uh, just winning position position absolutely right so yeah rook f5 was played king e3 and now king e7 and i was sure 100 that he will come to c6 for example and d5 and try uh, to push this pawn to c4 and you know uh, this is the only o for him because he must play very confident and and with you know like with ac active moves but he played a move king e7 it it was like a very big mistake i think because he must go for the activity in the end game and now I, I play the move h4 i don't know why it's a mistake for me it should be the best here i don't know king f6 another mistake by chesco i don't know g4 and a rook d5 and a rook b6 another mistake but i don't know uh, for me it's the best move in the position i thought that after king e5 it's it's beautiful move rook c6 and there is no moves f6 and now g3 and tuxvan c4 just taking it the king cannot go anywhere right and the rook if the rook is going i will take the pawn on c5 so yeah it's tuxvan very nice one uh, so after rook b6 check he played the move king g7 and now just rook c6 was a mistake probably yeah because g5 is the best i, I understand it afterwards because after rook c6 there is a very strong move f6 and here i didn't uh, saw some you know like uh, some plan for me to win this position because i cannot um i i cannot f go forward right after h5 there is like a f you know fortress of course uh, because I, I don't have any plan to to continue uh, development my my pawns here right so f6 was the probably the drawish move here so rook c6 was a mistake i probably should should have played g5 and after it to play rook c6 but i played rook c6 and now rook e5 checking f3 and rook d5 and now g5 i played and this position yeah should be lost rook d4 king h3 rook d5 and now g3 king h7 now king g4 yeah king g7 i thought that rook d4 should be the move but now king f5 just going forward and that's it rook d5 just king f6 and the pawn on f7 uh, of course weak and i'm winning here so yeah he played the move king g7 and now just h5 rook d4 king h3 rook d5 king h4 and now g4 and of course g6 this was my plan uh, just to remove this pawn from g and exchange it against the pawn on f7 and then i will have these two pawns uh, and i will run with them so it's winning f takes rook takes with rook c6 and i will just run with the pawns king h5 g5 g6 and h7 and i'm winning the position after for example king h8 just king h6 with g7 um threat of checkmate and if he's playing the move king g7 just rook c7 check and the same for example king f6 i don't know g7 with g8 queen yeah absolutely winning so after h7 my opponent resigned the game uh, and i won it you know a uh, very good start i i really was was shocked about this game because it was a preparation with end game and i felt like yeah i'm, I'm in a good mood i really hope that uh, i can do it uh, until the end of the tournament because for me until now it was it was really shocking that i'm playing uh, um yeah good like this i i felt like that 
I'm, I'm in a good shape and yeah I hope I hope to, to do it again tomorrow uh, let's see I don't know uh, so ladies and gentlemen how the match uh, finished so I can tell you guys that in the first board Viktor Michalevsky drew his game I won Ori Kobo won uh, Greenfeld won Posny drew and Husman won so we won five one against the Germany team and it's very good news for us so if you like this video don't forget to smash that like button right and I really want to thank you for watching this game really was definitely challenged uh, you know my preparation um, yeah and it was amazing to battle it out until the very end and um, so yeah I, I really want uh, to remind you to turn on the notification bell so you're ready for the next round rip up tomorrow and uh, the competition keeps up uh, and you know and you will not want to miss uh, the action so until next time bye